here. There's every kind of food business imaginable in Hunts Point and we've also been talking to a lot of people in the community and in the city and there's a general feeling of um, you know so much common ground around food and so much interest in uh, collaborating on this project. And we thought this would be a fun way to bring everybody together. They don't all know each other. Um, we're serving a shrimp slaughter with a side of beet chips. I love the cheese, it's really good. It's a good combination, you can't beat that. Shrimp, I think that's Monterey Jack, I'm not sure, but it's really, really good. These kids, they do, they do really great. They do wonderful work. So, we've been cooking since yesterday, prepping everything for today. Um, this morning, we actually um, got to cooking the shrimp. Um, we actually cooked the shrimp back here in a panini grill on the on-site. Um, we toasted our buns. We cut our cheese up. Uh, we made our remoulade sauce that has um, mayonnaise, Dijon mustard, um, Dijon mustard, fresh parsley, dill, and that we grow upstairs in our um, hydroponics and aeroponics system. We proposed Hunts Point as a location to look at, not because it was hit so hard in Sandy, but because Sandy really exposed the vulnerability of the food hub here and the regional food supply that would have been hit tremendously hard if Sandy had occurred just a few hours later. The surge would have been in the Long Island Sound and all of the markets um, could have easily flooded. One thing we learned from Sandy and Katrina is that who are the first responders? You are. We are. We're our first responders. And tonight we are here to bring this conversation home. This conversation about what we need to be prepared to look at your shoreline, look at the beaches, look at where the trees are at, look at where the walls are at, and try to come up with a plan that will make sure in the future that this doesn't happen. Don't think that just because the Bronx didn't get hit, we won't get hit the next time. The reason why this one square mile is important is because it feeds uh, 22 million people in the tri-state region. If flood hits here, not only are you compromising the food supply, you're compromising, um, and you're compromising thousands of living, working jobs. And Hunts Point is about food, and people are proud of it. And Hunts Point has a really incredible uh, and active community that's, you know, they love living here, they, they respect the jobs that are here, but there's not been a lot of opportunities to have both groups in the same room. So what I have here is uh, pulled pork. It's uh, actually called the pork butt, and it's uh, it's bone-in pork butt. And when you smoke it for 13 hours, the bone slides right out. Want to see the bone? I got a bunch here. One, two. Here, here's one. Look, the meat slides right off of it. Okay, I'm gonna try, and I'll be honest. Mm, you should slip down to Hunts Point Avenue. I tried the Hyde Leadership School's Cooking Club um, salad. Their Hide and Go Seek salad, very creative, very tasty. I also had um, Miss Jessie's chicken and stuffing, a big fan of stuffing. And the Wildcats had plantains and jerk chicken, which was also really delicious. I think shrimp is still at the top. I'm Spanish, so pork is like a main in my you know culture yeah, i still gotta try you know everybody else see how well they did i still believe i did good you gotta pull it a little more <laughs> you gotta pull it a little more we need more of this here we need more of this and you know to see all this community get together people that probably never have spoken to each other but to see everyone get together and converse over a meal and being introduced to different types of foods you know we need more of this over here in Huntsville. if this peninsula could be kept dry, so it's a high and dry spot, then there's likely to be a lot of private reinvestment. And that would be terrific for the South Bronx. Oh,